Welcome, welcome. It is snowflake time because finally here in Houston, Texas, we're getting some cold. Last night we got pretty heavy winds. Uh, you know, they almost blew the house, but hey, snowflakes are here to stay. So today I'm going to be looking at this project example, this particle simulation project example from the Incidium Concept Repository. And as you can see, we're probably going to learn how they make, you can make a particle simulation that is basically an animated snowflake, but you know, using particles. Okay, but I'm not really good at talking. So let's go ahead and open up this box right here. I'll select my top face, grab my knife and just make that cut right there. I'll open up this side, open up the other. I'm always going to remind you that you might not need cycles 4d to render this out it really depends on what they're doing with the particle simulation but if you have a subscription like me for cinema 4d x particles and cycles 4d then you don't have to really worry about that but there is a way around to render out the geometry there's always a way around the second thing that we have is just the render example they just want to show you what you can accomplish and here we have our project file our project example and i'm just going to go into the camera view we have around 210 frames so i'm just going to play it I'll stop around 72 frames because it's kind of losing its shape, but here you have it. Before I go any further, I just want to let you know that if you do not want to see this whole video and you're just interested in seeing, you know, a rendered animation because they do not include an animation, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. That is hafid.com particles all of those animations come from a project example that i did before so if you're interested in those go check out my youtube channel if you want to see the other videos but i just want to put that out there if you're only here to see the animation but let's go start getting into this to see how they make it the lighting is included as well as a materials the materials that they use everything is included in this project example so like i said we're pretty much expecting just to click on render and it should be working right out of the box okay i'm gonna go ahead and start opening the xp system so we can see the backs and bones of this whole thing Thing. you can already see that we have four particle groups we only have one particle emitter um, a couple of generators xp trail in the utilities we have a platonic and xp join and here is the secret sauce of this whole thing that i believe um, is the xp branch this is what is actually going to create that branching simulation that branching motion into this particle emitter and that's pretty much it we don't have any questions no actions might seem like a lot but i'm just going to start simple i'm just only going to activate the particle emitter and as you can see only shooting particle in one direction so let's check it out what is going on in the object the emitter is set to object mode we do have that xp join here in the selected object and it's emitting from the center of those polygons so i'm gonna head and try to activate that for now it is using the platonic to create the emission but i don't really see how it's using that shape maybe if we, if we read from the top because the emission is on a hexagon I, I don't know once again nothing much is happening because there's nothing activated no dynamics no modifiers so i go ahead and activate that xp branch so we can start understanding what this is doing i have it activated so now i'm just going to play it but nothing happened but if we check over here if i open it up we actually have a xp sub branch for depending on those branches i believe how many branches you want to create but on the main xp branch we have it set to independent don't really know how this is working it is using the branching group number one so i'm just going to activate that so we can see it and now you can see that it's making those particles the same color as our particle emitter as a particle group but once we activate the next xp sub branch you can see that this one is using the branch group number two which is going to be this green one so i'm just going to activate it play it frame by frame and we can already see that it's creating more particles and then it's actually kind of hard to see whenever that branching spawning is happening so i'm going to go ahead and activate the xp trails just so we can see where that motion is happening play it again and as you can see now we have lines that represent the motion the trailing of those branches and as you can see from the beginning we have a star in this distance from whichever the green points are activated and i believe you can change it here in the branching but i'll keep playing it as you can see it's going to create another star and once again over here is branching again but let me zoom out just so we can see it and now we can see our snowflake shape a little bit better so i'll just go ahead and activate the next sub branch i'll activate the branch group that is uh branch group number three and also that xp trail Go back play it again and there we have it but i really want to see how this is working so i just want to try to see this frame by frame so i'll zoom in i think you can press g to go to the next here we have our first branching group the red ones they move to their next spot and as you can see we have that trailing but green ones are starting to spawn whenever those um wherever those first red ones created I'll keep going to the next and now those green ones are each moving into their own direction go to the next go to the next and now out of those green ones the purple 
purple ones are going to be branching out of it and that is pretty much everything that is happening that is how this shape is being created once again i'll go over here the red one is pretty much just like the stem as you can see it over here is not doing much but at a certain distance that you can set it off the next group can start branching off and this is what we have here on the green ones but once those green ones reach a certain length a certain distance the next group which is the purple ones is going to start doing pretty much the same thing that the green ones were doing they're just going to start branching off and i assume that you can create as many groups as you, as you can but i know that at some point this is just going to look just too busy or i don't even know if it's going to keep its form i'm going to let it run just so we can see how far this thing gets zoom out so you can see a bit better And at about 155 frames is really struggling because we do have a lot of particles being emitted a lot of trails being created as well from those branching systems so i'm just going to stop it right there because it is getting pretty busy but if i zoom out you can see that there we have our snowflake there we have our shape but once i zoom in it gets kind of crazy remember that we start with a simple emission just going straight no branching and then from that group we start creating branches from a certain distance which i think it's if i go to the main x branch if i go to the object and then to to the branching tab you can see that enable branching is activated and we have branching in five frames i'm going to try and set it to 50 run the simulation again and as you can see it is not branching as often i have to zoom out all the way over here and you, there you can see that it is you know branching at that's about 50 frames each but yeah and that escalated pretty quickly but that seems to be it as far as the emitters so we have an emitter we have a trail for each emitter and most of the work is being done by the xp branch which is basically just going to create an emission point where each different particle group is going to be spawning from and honestly it's a very simple emission but because we have so many of them it's going to look over complicated but also because we have so many parameters to play around with just so you can have more artistic control of that branch system but here they're just giving you like the simplest yeah the simplest i guess simulation example of what you can accomplish with that xp branch and i was actually wrong if we take a look at the xp emitter you can see that it's using the xp join which inside of it has a cylinder this cylinder has six rotation segments which just makes it like a hexagon cylinder and that is why we have that hexagonal emission so i don't know let me try to put this into three play it so we can see and yeah there you go i'm seeing four red lines though so maybe change the emission from polygon center to points oh, okay <laughs> okay that's a lot of particles and for some reason this whole thing looks really blurry i don't know why but as you can see now we have a completely different look just because there's so many of them and i'm not really sure why there's only one object in this xp join so let me try and put that platonic inside of it and now it's just emitting in all directions just a bunch of particles but as you can see it is still branching off so it is still creating that snowflake now it's more like a 3d snowflake i'll try and play it for a little bit longer but i know this thing is just gonna struggle this is at about 31 frames and because we already have almost 200,000 particles being spawned it just has to compute so much stuff on top of that the trailing also has to compute and it's honestly pretty smooth if i just go around it but once i play it that's when it starts you know chugging but i'm just gonna set it back to where it was just so we can see if this thing is actually going to render and as you can see they already included two settings one for a high res mesh and one for a low res it's cool but it doesn't make a difference because they're not giving you the cache file so it'll be nice to have at least that if they're gonna give you you know options because you still have to compute all of the work but anyways you can see the low res has a voxel editor of two point radius of two and the high res you has to be lower so you get more detail mesh that one has a voxel size of 0.4 and the point radius of 1.5 i'll activate the low res just so this thing doesn't chug that much and as you can see we instantly get that mesh based on the trails over here of those particles of those branch particles you can see that our mesh is pretty detailed not much not much so like here at the ends but it looks pretty good so far so i'm just gonna go ahead and try the high res it took a bit longer to compute but here you have it it's it's actually giving us so much detail also i mean i can even move because it's so heavy i'll deactivate it find a cool shot maybe somewhere over there wow that is a very detailed snowflake but you're definitely gonna want to catch this because that took some time and i don't really think that i can move oh yeah i can 
can move around. I guess it was just like when I was showing the geometry lines and all that stuff. But look at this. In the high res setting, we can actually see where those branching is happening. We obviously have a smoother mesh. We do have some bumps every now and then, but I feel like that adds to the texture because, you know, it's ice. So this is looking pretty good. I think it's really cool that now we can actually see where that branching is happening. And just to compare it again, I'll deactivate it. Activate the low res. And yeah, this is definitely low res. As you can see, now we cannot even see what's going on. We see the purple trails, but we're not giving the measure enough information. So I think this works well if you're in a hurry, especially if you're not really zooming in. As you can see from far away, you don't even need that much detail. But if you're thinking of using this as a close up of a snowflake, you're definitely going to want to activate the high res and also cache that. Because once you're this close, you're going to want this high resolution trust me okay so now that we have our snowflake mesh i'm gonna try to render this and see if we can actually get a render look like you know how they advertised it i'll open up the cycles for the real-time preview but you can already see that this render is coming out really nicely if i bring down the render example that they gave us you can see that they look pretty much the same and they definitely have the high res mesh activated because as you can see you're gonna lose a lot of detail a lot of those lines are gonna go away you can still kind of see them but but just go for the high risk just cash it you're gonna get a way better looking snowflake and the last thing i'm just gonna take a look at is just the included material As you can see it's a glass bsdf dispersion going straight to the surface channel of our output but as you can see this is a purple node and you can see a plus sign over here if i click it and here is what is actually happening under the hood math anyone? This is, i mean i don't know what this is like you don't. No. <laughs> oh man, let me try to organize this, okay. You can go up here in the nodes and just select sort horizontally or vertically, depends what you want. There's too much going on, but at the end of the day, it's just a mixed shader with this glass dispersion and this transparent BSDF. I think the glass dispersion is included in Cycles 4D, so once you get it, it automatically adds it to the Cinema 4D library material and just add a transparent BSDF. I do have a question if anybody can tell me, like, what is this thing? Like, it doesn't tell me what this is. It is connected to the factor and it's coming out of the light path, but what what is this is this like a capacitor or something i don't even know what this is there's so many things going on over here that i'm not really gonna pay attention to it you don't need to know about it because the material is included in the project file so you can you know be my guest and try to find that out if you are already a pro i'm still learning the material is included the lighting is included so go ahead and save yourself some time download this project example from the insidium content repository and start playing around with it as you can see you have more multiple options once you start getting into particle simulations yeah it's gonna be a little bit overwhelming but the possibilities are limit literally going to be endless so i do feel like this thing can take me down into the rabbit hole but i'm just gonna start simple i'm gonna start modifying small stuff you know from the original part file but i'm just gonna honestly just take it step by step it really doesn't matter that much i'm still learning just step by step and if this whole branching system simulation was interesting to you for the next video i actually have planned to take a look at this intersection detection avoid example and as you can see we're now expecting more curve more natural flow of the branching system and as the name says now those branching systems might be a little bit smarter because you can actually make them detect where they're going to be intersecting so that way you can cut them off or you can make them change directions i don't really know so definitely stay tuned if you want to check that out my name is hafid and i'll see you on the next video